people in uh, Blenderland. Um, I uh, a couple of weeks ago was on the algorithmic forums and I was helping someone with a uh, an issue he was having pulling something from Blender into Substance Painter. Um, there was issues with the UV maps and what have you, and we s I helped him sort it out. And then for a while I was uh, debating whether to do a a tutorial on it at all. Initially, just to assist him in the future, and then I th I noticed over the next couple of weeks a few people have made similar comments regarding assets from Blender into Substance Painter. So what I've decided to do is to do a, a small set of tutorials. Uh, I'm going to take an asset that uh, Marco has agreed I can use and pull that into Blender, sort it out, do a little bit of uh, geometry tidy up, um, then create UV maps sort it out, uh, assign ID maps by the use of vertex paint so we can do some masking in Substance Painter and then uh, basic texturing, export it from Blender import, second one I'll import it into Substance Painter muck about with the materials because in Substance Painter really that's what it is it's as much fun as it is work uh, then export the textures from Substance Painter and then the final one will be pull the textures into Blender and just set them up. Um, I'll also show the the Substance Live Link plugin which means that you can have Substance open and Blender open and you can go into Substance do some work on the texture, pa texture sets and then resend them to Blender and B Blender will automatically update well I say automatically um, I've found I have to switch from solid to rendered mode because the viewport itself doesn't update even though the disp the texture set did um, and so without any further ado let's get started and the first thing to do is to pull in the uh, the FBX file that Marco s provided a link to um, the, the the person Marco I hope I get this name right it's Chacon uh, I do hope that's right apologies if it's not um, and this is what it is and it's just this here. Uh, when it comes in, you got what I, I call this the the typical import shader tree, um, but we won't be using that. I'll just be setting up some basic diffuse maps. And in fact, if I go in here and do T and N, oh, that's a thought. Let's throw on the the display keys. Make that a bit bigger and make the text a bit bigger, and move it up a smidge. There we go. <coughs> uh, so where was that? Yeah, I'm going to replace this with a diffuse. Um, the reason for which will be really obvious once I start using it. Um, I'm going to drag that over because we use a lot of the UV window in this. Um, not just so you can see what's happening with the UVs, but I'll actually use that as part of the unwrapping process. It's my workflow. Others may have their own style, this is mine, I've found it works for me and it seems to be reasonably effective. So the first things first, this is an imported object, so what do we do? The first thing we do is we check its rotation and the scale. Now I have got a video on uh, mesh cleanup and I really should do a second part to that, I will at some point, but I will be showing some of the techniques here. And I say the very first one is apply that rotation and scale. Uh, if you don't, and I can, I can show you what happens actually, if I go in here um, and let's just say we select that here, and I'll control click there, and you're going to bevel that, and I do control B, and that is actually beveling. Have I 
accidentally applied the... Oh, I've already applied the scale. Sorry, that was happening. Let me uh, let me clear that. Let's do this again. Okay, let's import the uh, the mask. It's an automatic thing. I just apply that scale without thinking. Like I say, it's the first thing you do. So let's go in and now we're going to edit mode and click, control click, control B and it looks for all the world like the, the bevel isn't working but if I keep going <laughs> you can see it eventually works and that's just because it is such a small scale so as I say the first thing we want to do is we want to apply that scale I'm going to have to turn these back on now hey who the wire one up. Right. So, control it. And depending on whether you use the pie menu, you just might get the thing. But as long as you're choosing rotation and scale, that gets set to one third to zero. Then happy days. The next thing we do, go into the geometry tab. Well, the object data tab. I always call it the geometry tab. Look at the geometry data. And clear any custom normals. If you didn't, if I undid that, then no matter what I do with the auto smooth, it's just not doing a thing. So click look custom normals. Now if I start moving that up, you can see it has an impact. So again that's something I do automatically. Right next step for me I go in here and I'm going to separate these all by material before I do that I am actually going to set the materials up as basic diffuse so I'm going to do diffuse and we're on yellow in fact I'm just going to call that yellow I'll take off the gas mask bit so makes more sense to me. Yellow. Drop it into the viewport colour. The reason for this will become really obvious in a minute. Copy material. Paste material. Straps. We'll have a sort of a brownie colour for the straps. Glass. Light blue. Because I always do when I've got a glass and I'm setting it up. I always make it light blue. Tank will have a nice green colour. I'm just making these colours obvious enough that I know what I'm playing with. Mask. All I'll do with that is actually I'll just saturation zero bump to get a sort of a mid grey colour. And then finally the tube. And Let's go purple. Never be afraid to use purple. So, there we are. We've got, as you can see now, you can see why I assigned them a colour. It's like if I select all the mask ones, I deselect everything here, and I select them and hide them, you can see, oh, select something, so I've got something to rotate around. I always have um, rotate around selection set in my preferences for this very reason, it just makes sense. But you can see here, if I switch to face mode, let's zoom in, I've got one spurious yellow triangle there and a couple of spurious green ones here. And that's simply because of this is a model that has been pulled in from elsewhere and it's the sort of thing that happens. So. Blender being Blender, the first thing I'm going to do is select them two. It selects tank last because that's the last thing I clicked. Just assign. I'm going to select these three, then one of them, and assign that. Right, so that's that done. Deselect, select everything. Do a P, actually Alt H, make sure I've got everything visible. P, and I'm going to separate by material. Now each object I'll come into object mode. Each object now has a material. So 
So everything's unique. So the next thing I'm going to do is in my numeric properties come down to my item I'm just going to hover over here control C control V I'm going to set this to visible layers only because I happen to have my always have my camera and light on layer 1 so just make sure now that my objects match my material names so you're not trying to guess what it is you're playing with when you click on an object and it's object 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to who knows what so right so there's all our settings done so first things first let's get push that down and let's save this so we'll save as I'm going to misc tests and we will save this as gas mask zero. Okie dokie doodles. Right, so now we get into the business of doing the UV map. And the reason we're doing it is as it stands, it's a mess. That's basically a light map projection where you do at least get a UV map. You could uh, try unwrapping and using smart project and that get you somewhere along but not necessarily the most efficient way of unwrapping um, in some instances you could get away with this um, it's not neat but substance painter being substance painter you'd still get the job done however it's as I say it's not elegant so the whole purpose of this tutorial is to show you the whole process um, be forewarned it will go on for a bit simply because it's a laborious process but there's nothing more frustrating than getting part way into a tutorial and someone says you click this you click this then carry on doing that and then they show you the final object so I'd rather you do this and then you can just fast forward through the tutorial uh, to suit yourself so we're going to take these one item at a time and the first item is the tube I'm going to turn off the manip manipulator. I normally don't use it simply because it gets in the way and it annoys me. Um, I just tend to use the shortcut keys for G for move and then do some axis locking. Um, the only time I do use it will be when I'm in normal mode and you'll see that in a bit. So let's go into edit mode and we select these two and I'm going to put a seam on them so I'm going to control E mark seam which you can see I have assigned to a shortcut of a single quote which is the one just to the left of the return key on the keyboard on the main keys I also have clear seam assigned to shift single quote um, I'm showing you these now because I'll be using the, the shortcut keys extensively um, because it's faster simple as uh, likewise I select the boundary loop with it says shift quotes there it's actually the hash key next to the carriage return key uh, I guess that's going to depend on your keyboard layout as to what whether that is actually the quotes key or not in mine it ain't but blender thinks it is likewise shift control hash goes to the inner region um, use them an awful lot right so I shall mark the seam and then I'll you to unwrap unwrap them and just hide them I'm not bothered about the scale just yet the scaling of everything comes once I've happily unwrapped everything so now what I ideally want is a seam running all the way down the tube but if I just click on that alt click I only get two and you can see the reason for that here actually if I go into face mode you can see that there's a face there so because there's a face that's stopping the selection so I'm going to do a shift G and I'm going to select polygon sides and clearly this is an arrayed object with a cap so I'm just going to delete those faces now if I have a look here I can alt click on there and I get myself the whole thing mark a seam now I could then just select everything and unwrap. The downside to that is what I've got 
is just one huge item which means I'm, I'm really not taking advantage of the UV space and we don't want that so what I'm going to do I select that loop and that loop use control plus to grow them two three four five six seven eight nine ten I'm going to select the outer boundary loop and again in future I will be using the shortcut keys I'm going to mark that as a seam I'm going to select the inner loop region I'm going to go choose into face mode I'm going to unwrap and then I'll hide those now I hide in face mode for a simple reason if I was still in edge mode what would happen is it would hide this and I'll show you what I mean and you're left with them you don't want that you want to clean hide of the items now I've just got to repeat that process for the remainder of the tube so two three four five six seven eight ten boundary loop seam in a boundary loop face unwrap hide and it's that quick and I'll do it slowly again two three four five six seven eight ten and your boundary loop seam in a boundary loop face unwrap I just press U again because the use underscore there so that's what you want and then just hide and now again two three four five six seven nine ten and the final bit I just need to select everything and unwrap alt hide select everything and I'll go into here I'll actually turn on the the sync button I'll do a control A to make sure all the scales of the islands match then control P and that's not done a bad job at all now I do use a couple of add-ons the first one I use is quad unwrap um, which uh, there's another one called UV squares but that's a paid one this one just literally does what it says it makes unwraps I also use shot packer which is a paid add-on for tidying up the UV maps and making the maximum use of the space put links to them in the description so select one of them and as I say I've got quad unwrap set to a shortcut of shift control Q so I'll click that so shift control Q click on a one shift control Q click on one shift control Q click on one shift control Q rinse and repeat now select everything control A control P run the shot pack right and so that's that actually I'll have that at point three two run it again that's fine and that's almost the tube done I say almost because I suffer for a, b a bit of uh, OCD for want of a better word I'll do shift numeric pad 1 and I'll zoom into that and I just don't like the way that's sat it just it does not pardon the pun it doesn't sit well with me so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on normal activate that hold shift and activate the rotate I'll pull out a bit I'm gonna turn on connected proportional editing do G start moving and then I'll just keep pressing page down until I get a decent size there and now I'm just gonna move this about until it's doing roughly what I want like that. and that like I say this is, this is just me it just looks wrong the way it was so I'll turn off that and I'll turn that off and I'm out now
and to me that's okay that's great that's the uh, that's the tube done so let's save before we go any further because paranoia is healthy so turn everything else on the next thing we're going to tackle is going to be the tank however before we can tackle the tank we need to highlight the yellow go into edit mode oh, that's not yellow highlight the yellow go into edit mode go into wireframe mode and we need to do some separating now I use left mouse button select I come from other 3D software so I just prefer it uh, so control right mouse button and drag make sure I've got everything and I'm going to separate that selection and then I'm going to do something similar here we're going one zoom in and I'm going to control right mouse button and drag and separate by selection so that leaves just basically the yellow bits pertaining to the mask out of object mode out of edit rather into object select that bit select that bit control J to join them shift hide everything and into edit mode first things first select everything and I'm going to do WR to remove doubles and OK now if we look at the mask we can see that all of that detail here is absolutely redundant because you never see it likewise on the mask itself there's detail within there which if I look at this side it's a duplicate all that detail is just not needed in here so it's gonna take up UV space when it doesn't need to so we'll deal with that when the time comes as well so first things first select them delete the vertices all right now I'm going to select everything else and alt J um, because basically it just gives you a cleaner mesh now you could call this quits now and just start applying seams um, and there wouldn't be anything wrong with that uh, like I say except for I think that's a waste of geometry and also that to me if I'm going to rendered view it, it seems incongruous to have a really a better edge on the outside than that does on the inside uh, to me it's a case you, you, you'd have both really oh don't want tab I want Z solid there we go so it just it just seems wrong so I do do a bit of work so the first thing I'll do I'm gonna select that I'm gonna hide it and then I'm gonna select all the yellow and I'll delete the faces right now I'm gonna select these use the C key draw around make sure I haven't selected anything else control plus I'm gonna hide that now if I go into wireframe mode I can see I've got something similar going on here so I'm gonna select that and then I'm gonna go to select link flat faces which we will use a lot of then control plus and I'm gonna hide them back into solid mode and I'm gonna unhide all of that and I'm gonna while it's still active I'm gonna make that a separate object and we can call that tank guide back into edit mode you can get into edit mode numerous ways that's one of them clicking on that there you can uh, tab object mode edit mode tab object mode click there you're in edit mode so there's more than one way to skin a cat in blender right so first things first let's take this edge alt click I'm gonna make a face out of it go into face mode click it to make sure it's selected I'm going to do shift 1 on the numpad that aligns the view I'll go into wireframe mode so I know what I'm playing with 
use 8 on the numpad twice so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to I to insert a little bit and then shift 1 on the numpad E to extrude. Now I have my snapping set to vertex closest and it's off and what I just did there is basically I when I extruded I held the control key down so it snapped to that point. I'll be doing it again in a bit. You'll see what I mean. So that's that. So I'll do shift one again. I'm going to do E, hold control, go over any one of those vertices up there and that snaps to that point. And I'm going to delete that face. It's not seen, it's not needed. Okay next one is we're going to go in here alt click that and hide it alt click that and hide it H click on that press L and delete faces unhide everything right and what we want to do now is add more geometry to this now initially you could just do WS to subdivide but now you've added an extra line around each section that you just don't really need. So let's undo that. What we're going to do is select one of them, do Control E and select Edge Rings so we get them. Then Control E again, select Edge Loops. Now subdivide and it just doubles up the number of segments. So now we'll Control click on that. Now you have to have your loop tools add-on active if activated for this so W loop tools circle and then we just alt click and shift R which repeats the last action alt click shift R alt click shift R if you alt click you press F3 and you can get to access to your history there as well if you want R will always be the last action but the F3 allows you to do something else that you've just reason recently done. Last time do shift R, I'm going to press F and make that a face. Go into face mode, click on it again again shift 1. Go into wireframe mode I'm going to hide everything else. It just makes it easier to see this the guide thing. I'm going to E, pull it down a tiny bit scale it out. This doesn't have to be 100% correct because it's internal E, hold control, click, pull it over, I to insert, line that up, shift 1, E, control, click, scale, right, now I'm going to set that as sharp, then I'll do a control plus twice, boundary loop, set as seam, back into mode, and I can disable the visibility of that and unhide everything. Now I've done that I can alt click, alt shift click, W and bridge edge loops. I'm trying to do this at roughly the sort of speed I would do it rather than going really slowly and um, say so you can you can always if you've got a video a YouTube video downloader download it and run it slower or just run it slower in YouTube and skip around as you see fit right now the setting up of seams on this just takes a bit of thinking about in terms of what you're going to do in substance painter um, now I could just put a seam all along here and that would just open it up the problem with that is when it comes to this face in substance painter you, you would end up with slightly radial lines where you've got any noise and you don't want that so we'll select that, mark that as a seam. We'll select that, and shift select them, mark them as a seam. Then I'm just going to click on the control click on the mark that as a seam. And we'll just have that one there, mark that as a seam. Now we select everything and unwrap. And there we've got our tank. Now you can either leave that like that or 
you can click on there and do and make that quads control A control P um, I'm just going to leave it like that for now because this actually will be included with the yellow items again to maximize the amount of the UV space that's just too much wasted UV space for one item one thing we do need to do is we need to select these because they were yellow I'm going to come in here create a vertex group assign that and call it yellow and now we've got to think about the ID mask to separate that within Substance Painter so let's go into Vertex Paint make sure the mask is active and just pull this down yellow and then Shift K to flood that go back into Edit Mode invert the selection go back into Vertex Paint choose Green Shift K and that has created our vertex color map which will be our ID map within Substance Painter so back in edit mode everything's happy and we can exit edit mode and that's the tank done now we can highlight the tank guide that's now redundant to delete it and now is a, another good time to save next stop is well actually what we can do is we can do the the bits of the yellow pertaining to the mask shift hide everything go into edit mode click that we're going to select link faces which is control alt shift f it's a mouthful but it's pretty quick to do i'm going to press f and then mark a seam select everything do an alt j so we get quads instead of uh, triangles. I'm going to just mark one of them as a seam. Select that, Control Shift Alt F. Face, mark seam. Do the same again. F for face, mark seam. Select everything. Unwrap. That's that done. Again, I'm not bothered about tidying the UV map up because that will all be included in, in future in the uh, the one item where this and all the yellow bits will be done so again save before we can go further shift H next stop the straps so edit mode select everything alt J now going to f edge mode I'm going to take that edge I'm going to con alt control X to clear it and I'm just going to select those two he says, and press J to join so that you get the same sort of thing now if I come out you haven't got that sharp line there okay next stop is UVing this which we do starting on the inside and we start on the inside rather than the outside because we can effectively trace the path here all the way through and then it flips to the outside if we start on the outside then you reach this point and you've got occluded geometry which would be a nightmare to try and select so it's just little things like that you can think about when you you in so I'll see and I'll just grab some of these here I'm not going any further than this I'm going to be using the the shortest path thing which is the control click so, and I I do it in small sections because if you do it just with one click there is absolutely no guarantee it will go where you want like that for example that is totally not what we want so I shift click on there and then just control click in sections like that and just zoom in and shift click the rest because you've got a couple of little triangles there and shift click control click control click control click control click zoom in select manually again shift click control click control click control click shift click these to select them and shift click control click 
control click control click and we've got two more to go so shift click control click control click control click and one more time shift click control click control click I just select these manually right now I'm gonna go here into again the vertex groups add a vertex group assign first call that in a bit in a strap call it what you like just that tells me it's inside now I can unwrap that I can choose the boundary loop and mark a seam right. I can now then go to edge mode uh, point mode rather select that and press hide just check something there whether that was a display glitch it was and I hide that now and what that's done is very handily not just remove the inner bit but the edges of the strap so I can select all of those points create a new group call it out a bit and assign them I can unwrap that I can alt H and we're part way there right next stop we want the middle bits how do we do that we go to face mode we select the outer bit and because we're in face mode it just hides them select the inner bit hide and you're left with the edges select all of them and use one wrap and that just leaves you with one unholy mess um, now what you can do now is go into edge mode deselect everything go into wireframe and I'm actually going to turn off seams on this so I can see what I'm doing in terms of what's actually highlighted so I'm going to just shift control checking that I'm selecting everything I want oh, it's just control doesn't need shift so control Oh, that's right, yeah, with the control, the shift un undoes it. So, we're selecting edges all about here. Um, call that one, say. I'm going to mark them as a seam. Control E, mark seam. Select everything. Unwrap. Right, so now we're, we're getting somewhere. Now I'm actually going to do the rest within here. So I'm going to control up arrow to give that the maximum space. Uh, just doing a control P there just so I can see what I'm playing with. I'm going to deselect everything. And I'm going to do the same here. And just going to select individual edges with the control. And I'm basically looking for, again, where I think the link up in this case going to control he e up arrow select everything in here and unwrap so okay that's getting closer now we want the ones in the middle now because these are so small I deselect everything if these are so small then it doesn't really matter in terms of the seams where they are you're not gonna notice it that much let's try that again and I just select these so all I'm thinking of here rather than anything is it's just tidying up the UV space actually I'm gonna put a seam on there as well because that, that's a bit too long for my liking and don't Actually, no, I'm going to do control shift on that and get rid of that seam. Dump. Uh, I prefer that one. And that one will do. If something weird happens, hit control Z. My 
can tell you coming from a lightwave background I do like the undo feature on Blender right so control E arc seam up arrow select everything unwrap ah, that's a bit better now alt hide select everything and unwrap hang on where have the other bits gone what's happened here that's interesting something's gone slightly chaotic here was um, oh what's happened there okay speaking of the undo I've done something wrong here so let's back up a few steps here we go and let's do control A control P alright I have no idea what happened there if anyone spotted what I just did that by all means let me know as you can see again this isn't exactly a brilliant use of space so I'm in edge mode and I'm basically I'm just gonna go in here and I'm just gonna select some of these edges here and um, bump bump and I'm gonna mark them as a seam and do the same here mark as a seam select everything you unwrap oh it's done it again ah I know what it is now I know what it is now I select that I'm going to actually I'm not even going to do that I'm going to come in here press L shift L I'm going to go boundary and seam. Now, if I select everything and unwrap, there we go. Somehow I've managed to lose the seam on the uh, edge pieces. So that's what that's what caused that. So that's all good. Right now, that's all I want for that. So that's fine. And again, I'm not going to go too far with that because I'm going to include the glass with that. So we're going to come out with that. Alt H. So we've got the glass. So let's select the glass. This one is the easy one. Go into it. Select everything. Alt J W unwrap. Not W. U unwrap. Duh. I'm going to assign that and call that group glass. Go in with the glass selected I'm going to shift click the straps and do control J and go into edit mode I'm going to select everything control A, control P do a shot pack if I undo that you, you can see it just it just makes slightly better use the the glass suddenly got a little bigger oh, I'm forever doing that and right now we're going to give ourselves an ID map for this based off the materials so what we're going to do go to the materials select the straps go into vertex paint mode select a brown color make sure the mask is turned on and shift K go back into edit mode control I to invert the selection vertex paint, give it a blue colour, shift K back into edit mode right, going to rename that straps and glass select everything and assign it the, the glass itself now is, is redundant we'll be using the ID mask instead so I can highlight the glass there and remove it likewise on the tank I can highlight that and remove it and I can call that tank and yellow which we will finish off in a minute I can save everything okay 
Speaking of yellow, let's do the yellow. Shift hide that yellow, we we'll call that yellow clasps, actually. Just for now, I mean, they are going to be part of the uh, the tank in a, soon, but it just, in case I stop this and com come back to it, if I was just doing it for myself, I know where I am. Again, I'm not guessing what yellow dot one is, is the clasps. So I go in here, select everything, Alt J, and just to give us a bit of stuff to play with. And this is where the link faces really comes into its own. Select one of them. Control Alt Shift F for link faces. And you can see brilliant in it, you know, wow. And it's just the sharpness. We'll ramp that up to about 18 and 19 and all of a sudden you've just got everything relating to that even though it's on a slight curve so now what do we do we just rinse and repeat shift click control shift F and so we'll just go that through this now doing the remainder and it's this quick If you accidentally click something, like you click instead of shift click, just control Z to revert back to your previous selection. Then shift click and carry on. The hardest part of this is the orbiting of the, the viewport. Right, have we got everyone? Do we have everyone? We do not. Let's go into wireframe mode. Again, if I accidentally click somewhere or press something, you can always control Z. That looks great. I'll go back into that mode. I'm going to hit U for unwrap on them. And, and I'm going to go boundary and mark seam. Now a funky thing with this is if I now choose inner boundary, it actually ends up selecting the, the next set of geometry I want, which in this particular case is just a happy accident. So again, I can unwrap on that. And I'm actually going to turn off the sink now because I want to work on these bits in themselves. So again, Control up arrow, go into your edge mode. Let's start selecting these. And as I said before, this is all about maximizing your UV space more than anything. So I select all of these here. I'm going to do Control E and Mark Seam. Now I'm going to go around these as well, selecting one edge for cutting. I select an edge. Doesn't really matter which edge, as long as it's an edge. Control E, oh, Control E, Mark Seam, up arrow. Again, with them still highlighted, unwrap, have a double check. Yeah, happy days. Select everything, now unwrap. Now, as regards these little guys, it depends what you want to do. You can just leave that as is. Um, and just, I mean, it's, they're that small and there's no overlapping polygons, you could get away with it. Or if you wanted to, then you can do Control shift f mark that as a face, put a seam on it, and just repeat the process throughout the whole thing. Now, if you want to do that in the viewport, that can get a bit messy. So if we select everything, so it's all in here, you can actually do it in here instead. So we're going to face mode. And I can select them. And up arrow. And I can go in here. 
of turn that on actually and I select them turn the sync on and come in here and press F then I'm only affecting them so you could do that select them drop F and you could go through and do that it's, it's entirely up to you um, doesn't really make much difference to be honest as I say in this particular instance I think either either or would be perfectly fine so we're just going to leave it at that and go in here do a control A control P just see how everything looks and it, it's alright so we can come out of there unhide everything so I'm going to select the yellow shift select yellow clasps and then shift select the tank and then do control J so we now have tank and yellow so let's go into edit mode deselect everything select all of the yellow go to the assign them to that group select all of that so it includes the bit we had previously had go into vertex paint with the yellow and the mask on and shift K right back into edit mode that's fine and we can go to the and then just assign everything there we go come out and delete the yellow so again now we have an edit mask which will control that and save so that's most of the donkey work done now the last thing to do is the actual mask itself and that's what we're going to do now so select the mask shift hide everything else now with the mask we can if I go into wireframe mode basically use the mirror modifier and just do half the mask there are a couple of gotchas to be aware of the bottom bit isn't perfectly in line as you can see it's slightly off kilter and as you saw in the wireframe we've got some geometry there so we'll deal with them first then delete the geometry and use the mirror modifier so in we go everything selected alt j a little tidy up right now we want to alt click that hide l that hide now in terms of this bottom bit I just selected in a jump that to jump to it what I am going to do is I'm actually going to select that do a control plus I'm going to hide them select them hide them and I'm happy with that that's what I want to deal with so I'll hide them and just P selection and again I'll call this mask I'm gonna call that part 2 because that we do actually want that I'm gonna save before I go any further because paranoia is a healthy thing reselect the mask go in we can hide mask part 2 for now right now we want to go into wireframe mode front view vertex mode and let us just select some of these here and delete the vertices and these here and delete the vertices and then we're left with a couple of situations here we have to address um, so the easiest way if your cursor isn't at center is just pick something you happen to know is on the center and you can check that here x0 so I'm going to do a shift s and put my cursor there I'm going to select 
all these. I'm going to make sure my pivot is my cursor and scale x0 and return. I'm going to go into this mode now and make sure and as we can see these two are an issue so I'm going to scale x0 on that and line them up and that just does a better job so here we go now whether you want to turn these into quads is entirely up to you but I think actually I am not going to bother I'm just going to leave that as is uh, we've got some ugly looking geometry here frankly um, so I'll tell you what I'm going to take that face I mean it doesn't really matter because you can't really see it but I'm going to take those three faces and I'm going to GZ and just pull them down a little bit and deselect that and GZ that's not working either so let's select that face and that face and GZ it's, uh, well, I say it's not visible but it, it's just annoying so I'm actually going to do a GZ that and pull that up a bit because again you don't see it so you know where's the point okay so select that control alt shift F border mark seam I'm going to do alt click that mark seam alt click that mark seam alt click that mark seam zoom into that I, I know from experience I actually don't want them a seam so I'm going to clear the seam on them and then I'm going to add seams here because of the way this particular piece of geometry is if you try to do anything with it still connected you'll end up with uh, overlapping UVs you know want this okay so let's alt click that there where do we go we're going down to the shift click that control click the seam now let's sort these guys out as well so alt click boundary loop hide everything I'm gonna turn off display sharps for this and then just alt click that well just L over that is that the one I want and I'm gonna mark that seam and unhide everything yep that's indeed what I want right this one click the control click again what watch how far you control click there's no guarantee and it'll take the path you expect it's always worth having a bash first because you can always undo and go back right something I want to show you here look at the way that's messed up and that's just how splitting into triangles can affect the geometry all I need to do there is rotate the edge and it fix the issue sweet okay let's sort out the rest of these control click I'm gonna basically cut around all of these things I'm gonna mark that as a seam uh, that is a bit sharp I'm gonna go in and I'm actually gonna use alt s and just move it around until there we go which is shrink fatten and that just tidied that up which is nice click control click control click seam click control click control click control click seam um, we want to deal with this guy now don't we so let's go in here face mode ring control plus boundary seam okay face mode alt click shift alt click shift alt click shift alt click boundary seam 
face mode, down, control, all, shift, F, F for face, seam. I went to edge mode, click, control, click, seam. Now I'm going to take that and clear seam so it stays joined. So that's that done. Now we want to want to give it a, a loop here. So let's go in, control, click, shift, sh control, mark seam. And this bit we'll do manually. So click, click, shift, click, shift, click, shift, click, seam. We happy? We got that, we got that going on, we got that going on. Oh, we've got to do this guy the same way. And different way of doing it, just select those edges and control X. Click, control click, seam. Dum, 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 dum. Yeah. As, as, as everything with Blender, there's usually more than one way to skin a cat, as they say. And boundary seam. Right, let's see what we've got for now. We unwrap everything. And okay, we've got some issues we need to address. And this is where having sync on really shines. So, uh, like for example, here. So I'm going to control, I'm going to select that, up arrow, and that tells me that's where the issue lies. Which I know from experience of having tried this once or twice already. So I'm going to select a face, and you've guessed it, control click. Now just watch when you're doing this again that it is going in the order you expect it to go. Um, it just have to be wary, like there you see it's missed that. If I back that up two steps and I control click there instead, it does what I expect. So just be wary, it's not necessarily going to go the flow you expect it to. So again, dump, I'm going to hide everything else, I'm going to select that face and hide it. I'm going to select that face and hide it. Uh, select that one, press L. That's the inner loop, and I'm going to mark that as a seam. Unhide everything. Right. Now let's see how we're getting on. And we've still got an issue. So, and let's see, select those. And I yeah, I mean, I always knew it was going to be this that was the issue. So, a bit of manual seam marking here. This, 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 this. This, this, that, that, and that. So it cuts that top bit off. Now we want to cut the bottom bit off. So, that wants to be cut off. And where do we go here? That is an edge we want. That is an edge we want. Where are we now? And I said that would probably be an edge we want. Now we also want to separate these. So I'm going to se select these. Just manually. Um, again, I'm, th I'm thinking here where the splits are best to take place, boundary and select loop. Alright, now let's try unwrapping that and see what we get. Okay, that's split nicely. We've got no overlapping polygons. We've got a gap there. Everywhere else appears to have split nicely. Let's up arrow. Let's do a control A and a control P so we can see if there's anything going on that we need to be aware of. There is not. I'm going to take this. I'm actually going to assign that as a seam. And where does that sit? That actually sits where it's not even visible. So, if we select everything, and unwrap, 
Control A, Control P, Control up arrow. Let's see what we've got. Gonna mark that as a seam. I didn't do it, did I? I, cl I used clear seam. That's what I did. That's better. Let's try that again, shall we? Door. Control the arrow. Control A. Control P. Is that looking nicer? Uh, let's do an F6. Let's make that a bit bigger. 0 0.016. So we can see the gap nicer. You know what? Yeah. I'm saying yeah. I'm digging that. I've got no overlapping polygons that I can see. So, happy days. So let's save before we do anything else, because what do we say? Paranoia is good. Now, when it comes back together, I don't actually need a seam there, so I'm going to clear that seam, because that'll be all one face. Everything else, though... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Add Z modifier. Z mirror. Clipping. All fine and good. All happy days. Let's turn on the mask part two. Let's see if we've got any do any massaging of points here, which we clearly have. So I'm gonna actually gonna do that so I can select that. Actually select that and I'm gonna go GG pull it in. That's that one. And that's the advantage of using the mirror, you can see if you've got any visible gaps the rest aren't actually visible so yeah we'll live with that turn that back on go into object mode apply back into edit mode now if you wanted to you could leave that as that the trouble is then if you want to do any asymmetrical work it's not going to work so I just select everything and unwrap again And also, if you did do that, what you can't do is trash this geometry that's not going to be seen. Which is what we want to do. So let's do that before we do our final unv wrapping. And we also need to include the, the second item as well. So first things first, let's tackle the non-symmetrical units. Hide that. L, L, and delete the faces. Do the same here. L, 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 L. L delete faces alt hide go into edge mode we can total those two edges because they're not required anymore select that press F for face face mode extrude in about the mark that as a seam can mark it sharp it doesn't really matter don't forget to add a seam there okay we happy? We happy with that? Let's just select that to control shift F and make that a face. So there's no reason it having multiple faces. We have one. Now we want to join this bit together. So select that, shift select the mask, control J. Right, so now that's now again part of the, the object. And as is this. So let's go in, select that. And we're just going to hide that for now because we're just going to work a bit. Select that loop, press F for face, click, and I'm going to give that a name. I'm just going to uh, assign a group to that. There's a reason for that, I'll show you in a minute. And unhide everything, deselect, and then I'm just going to select that group, go into wireframe, and shift one. And the reason I did it is it will allow me to just control it more. So let's put the normal on and let's put it on medium point. I'm going to scale Z, Z, 0. So it's nice and flat for this particular beast. I'm going to E 
scale like that and E move up to about there scale that out a little bit delete the face I'm going to select them shift hide I'm going to turn that off I'm going to select that and I'm going to delete the faces L that and delete the faces Alt hide right that needs to be shrunk so what I'm going to do actually is select that ring and that ring let's try shift one actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that ring and I'm going to make a face go into face mode now let's try shift one hide everything wireframe now shift one there we go I'm going to call plus control and I'm going to scale shift Z hold on that's not right normal yet yeah, scale shift Z scale see yeah I'm happy with that Let's select that to control shift F <laughs> delete faces right turn that off put that back to global I'm going to L and select boundary loop I'm going to mark that as seam before I do any further I'm going to select that I'm going to mark that as a seam alt shift shift I'm going to do W bridge edge loops and that'll give me the new face for the go in here make sure they're a seam go in the back do the same thing now let's select that face control alt shift F select boundary loop seam Same thing, control shift F, boundary loop seam, control shift alt F, boundary loop seam, seam. I think that's right. Select everything, unwrap. And let's take a look, see. And yay. Yep, yep, uh huh. Yep, yep, yep. Everything as it should be. We should stop doing that. Oh, right. Okay, let's pack. Just run it a couple of times, see if we get any results we prefer. Yeah, I'll live with that one. That's okay. And that's the mask done. I'll save everything. The mask is always the most awkward bit. But as I say, you can now see that we've got some non symmetrical stuff going on there, which is super. Okay, we're going to call this tank and yellow. <laughs> now, another thing you can do we've been using ID masks based off texture, off materials. At no reason at all why I can't assign this some ID maps of its own. So I can go in and um, depending if you want to isolate these in Blender afterwards as well you can always create vertex groups for this but I'm just not going to bother. I'm just going to use vertex paint. Actually I don't want that. I do want that and I'm just I want them let's go in L L L L L L is that what I want that's what I want for the first bit okay do you know what yeah I will I'll just 
create a couple of vertex group, call it group or one, and assign them. Go into vertex paint, make sure the mask is on, give it a red colour, and do shift K. Go back into edit mode. Right, I can hide them. Right, I want that. L. I want this. So I'm just pressing L here all the time, select the bits I want. I can create group 2. I can go into vertex paint. Let's give it a dark blue and shift K. Back into edit mode. I'll hide everything. And so now I've got a vertex map for that. So we're all happy. Come out, I'll hide everything. Save. This is now ready to go into Substance Painter. So you can just select everything. You may be tempted to make a hierarchy of this, and I did at one point. Don't bother. If I make this a hierarchy with the mask as the parent, what happens is when you pull it into Substance Painter, the FBX gets all of the rotations completely off the bat and because you can't reset rotation and scale within Painter then it just looks silly. So just select everything. I'll drag that over there for now. And then we choose File, Export, FBX. We want Selected Objects Only, minus Y Forward, Mesh, and the geometry is we don't want to apply modifiers and let's set the smooth interface and then we go in there and um, just save it somewhere as an FBX and that is that and the next video would be involved of <coughs> basically opening the FBX in Substance Painter setting up our texture sets and playing around with various Col uh, materials using the ID masks based off the vertex colours so we can control what gets what were um, and then as I say the final video we'll be pulling it all back into Blender so I will see you in the next lot um, normally at this point they say the like and subscribe rubbish frankly if you've found this useful then happy days if you want to like by all means do um, if you want to leave a comment do so um, and I'll see you in the next video bye for now